hey guys what's up welcome to this video about state management so in some of the previous videos we uh, learned about use state and uh, there was like a very small little introduction to state management uh, now in this section we will expand our knowledge on what state management really is and how we can handle it efficiently in our applications so a quick recap state management is about the state of data in an application and generally speaking you have two kinds of state in your app it can either be ui state which is state that is local right so it's only stored in your application and you can think about uh, the state whether light or dark mode is activated right or whether a modal is open or closed or whether a button is clicked or not right this is local state and it causes uh, the UI to, um, you know, behave in a certain way. Now, on the other hand, you also have server cache, and that's data that's coming from an API, a server, and it could, for example, be a list of users that you are fetching. Now, uh, the reason I'm calling this server cache is simply because you do not manage state on your front end, right? the state that is being managed on your API is all handled by the API itself and uh, the database it's connected to, right? So you know that if I make a request right now to the API and it got a response, let's say a list of users, I know that in maybe 10 seconds from now, when I make a new request, I will get like different data, right? So that's why I call it cache because it's essentially the moment you receive it, it is, you know, it's already cached, right? You're not sure that that data is still like the same as it's on the server. So uh, the next thing we will look at is local versus global state. And I don't want you to be confused about what I said about local state before, because with local in as, as in terms of UI state, I mean that it is state that is like local to your application, right? It's not shared or has shared state with anything else. Like your server cache, this is something you, um, you know, that depends on what the API will return. The UI state only lives in your application. It doesn't, you know, live outside of that. It's not being ser uh, stored on a server. So if we then get into local versus global state, um, the main takeaway is that if you can keep it local, you have to try to keep it right there, okay? So uh, let's imagine in the upcoming uh, videos, you will learn about this, but you can imagine that we have some state stored in component A and we could then um, share it with component B and C if they are child components, right? This is an example of local state. Now, you also have the principle where you talk about global state and what you do right there is you kind of like pull out the state and put it in like a separate container that lives outside of your components. And then no matter where your components live, you know, they don't have to be parent or children uh, from each other. It doesn't matter where they live in your application. They can sort of subscribe to that state and always get or change data right there. This is of course overly simplicated and uh, you will learn more about this in the upcoming videos. But the main takeaway of um you know this section of the course is that you you know if you can keep state locally try to keep it right there so what can you use for managing state in your application um, in the upcoming videos we will learn about all these including redux um, but the preferred way of handling state is for ui state first try to um, share the state using props if that doesn't work, you can use component composition. And if that doesn't work, you can um, use the context API, but you will find that um, there, you know, the cases where you really have to use the context API are limited. And for our server cache, we're going to use a technology uh, called React Query, which is great and uh, will take care of that. Um, we will also learn about Redux and, you know, the thing, with all the, you know, Redux is considered to be a state management library, just as Recoil and Jotai and Zustand. And, you know, there are like probably dozens of more uh, state management libraries, but this is just, you know, some of the ones that are very popular. 
And um, you should imagine that for most applications, I'm talking probably 95% end up, you won't need a state management library like Redux or some of the others listed right here, right? You can perfectly get away with using props, component composition, the context API and React query, but there are use cases where you, um, you know, you're, where you will simply need a state management library, but uh, how you make that decision, that's something you will learn in the upcoming videos. So thanks for watching and I'll see you there.